week where we have a very pleasant show because we have a Michigan victory over Maryland, 20 to nothing, and I feel like the movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Who are those guys out there <laughs> wearing those uniforms amazing? Oh, those are, that's Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are real pleased, Jim, to, um, to get through the uh, non-conference part of our schedule uh, unbeaten, and um, people uh, before the season would not give us much chance of doing that. I think this team has been remarkable in terms of um, their attitude, their approach to the game, and the way they play it. But uh, we still have to give a little yeah, bit Yeah, I know. A lot of people are asking me, well, just how good is Michigan? And I say, well, you know, they must be better than a lot of us thought at the beginning of the season. What about the head coach? How good are they? Well, I think uh, one thing is they're a better team than they were a year ago. And uh, they have a lot more skill, and they can do more things. Uh, the defense is playing much better. Um, but uh, the secret to it is that they have a tremendous team unity and a tremendous attitude and wonderful leadership from their seniors, and that's the difference. And in the Maryland game, mm -hmm. it was the defense that got it going again early, got you on the right track. Right. Well, they've made big plays, uh, you know, for, throughout the first three games. Here is, uh, they took the ball here in the first period and went back to pass, and here's a great sack by uh, Mark Mesner, a fine uh, sophomore defensive tackle. Uh, and you can see the enthusiasm of the Michigan defense. They, they have a lot of pride, and they play very well together. <clears throat> so we get the ball back at about midfield, and Jim goes back to pass and takes off running, gets inside the 40-yard line, and we're getting down into position here now where we can score. And you felt this was the <clears throat> toughest defense you were going to face in these three non counters games, too? It, it was. There isn't any question about it. It's a very, very tough defense. Come out with a delay pass to Eric Caddis, who had a great game for us, Jim. Uh, probably his finest game at Michigan, uh, which got us a first down. On the third and one, we go for it, and uh, unfortunately, uh, they uh, put a couple of linebackers <laughs> and beat our guys and stopped it and uh, forced us to go to the field goal, and Mike Gillette kicked it through, and we lead the game three to nothing in the first period. Did you have a feeling going to the tight end was gonna happen against this team? No, you re never really know. Uh, <clears throat> but um, here, uh, Maryland gets the ball back and starts to move, and they've got a tremendous running attack. They've got great backs and a big, big offensive line. Here, we're uh, <clears throat> blitzing from the backside, and he rolls out the other way. Hits her tight end inside the 30 for a first down. Did you ever imagine a shutout, though, with the way the defense is playing against this team? Not against this team. Uh -huh. I never, not in your fondest dreams, would you imagine that you'd shut them out. But, you know, I'll never hold this, uh, hold anything back on this defense. They may do anything. But here they're down in there close now, and they pitch the ball to Badanik, the uh, big fullback, and uh, he gets stopped and uh, forced him to go to the field goal, and uh, he dubbed it and missed it. Uh, which really helped because, uh, uh, you know, they could have tied the score very easily there. And that had to pick you up emotionally, so. Right, and that sure helped. Trap play up the middle with Bob Perriman, the big fullback, getting good yardage uh, as soon as we got the ball back at the 20. Here's a third and one situation. Uh, we fake in to get the first down, go back to pass, and here Eric Caddis down the middle all alone. This is a big play. You surprised and, a few people besides <laughs> Maryland on that one, too. Well, you know, if the, if the, if a defense is going to give you something like that, you better take it. And uh, we felt that uh, he'd be open and he was. Here on a third and two option play, Jim does a great job here because we didn't block it very well, and really they had a defense by uh, veering out into the play. Here is a naked bootleg. Uh, he has no blockers out in front of him. He fakes the sweep the other way. Comes back to Caddis, who's wide open for the touchdown and uh, we lead 10 nothing at halftime. Did you know that was going to happen again, the tight end being open in those goal line situations? Well, you always take a chance when you bootleg naked. Well, when I say naked, Jim, <laughs> I mean that there are no this blockers is, out in front of him. This is, after a, G he rated, the this is a G rated <laughs> show, no problem about but, it. But uh, he faked the sweep the other way, came back, had his block down, came out to the flat and was wide open. Well, it was 10 to nothing at halftime, and it got even better in the second half. So don't go away. We'll be back with the second half highlights right after we pause for these words. I'm just real pleased that the team played as well as we're doing. Um, we were under, or we were, came in the game uh, underranked. People, people are going to start respecting Michigan now. We've beaten three highly ranked teams. We're going to be ready for the conference.
in this game that we're going to be able to pass. And uh, Paul Jokic last week gave him a great passing game. Kind of helps me out. He, uh, you know, people start covering him now, and it opens me. Now that I'm catching the ball, hopefully it'll help him out. Here you go, we can't. I don't know whether you remember, but last year, Maryland was down 31-0 at halftime to Miami and came back and won that game, one of the great comebacks. And I well, reminded them of that at halftime. I was going to say, did that cross you your that. mind? Because they came sure. out in the second half flying, and it looked like uh, maybe right. that comeback syndrome was going to happen. That's, you're absolutely right. They're a dangerous team, and they did it a year ago, and, and uh, we, uh, we talked about that at halftime. You were aware that they could get some things done, oh, yes. and, and here it looks like they're here, starting to. Uh, this big fullback is starting to ramble down, and picks up eight yards on, a, on an off-tackle play, comes right back and run it again. This time he really breaks out, goes inside the 40 to the 35-yard line, and they're on a real fast mark. Fourth this, and four. This, this is the play. They chose to go with a kind of a delayed trap, and uh, we do a pretty good job of defensing it because it was a four-yard play, and they, they got about two, three yards, but not the four. Do you think that's the key play of the game where it really big turned play. around? That was a very, very big play. Uh, we come back. Jim goes back to pass. Uh, throws a uh, beautiful uh, corner route to uh, Jokic for a first down. Jim Harbaugh is just getting better and better, isn't he? Well, I think so, and we always did feel he was a good quarterback, and uh, now he's you know, have a ch having a chance to prove it. This is an option play. Jim keeps the ball and goes inside the 15. Um, if we can get a score here, Jim, it's going to really uh, help us. Um, here on an isolation play, uh, Jamie Morris goes down into the two-yard line, and uh, things are looking pretty good up until a play coming up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wilshire dives in, but gets the football, and they recover on the one-yard line. This one didn't make you happy, I Not know. at all. Not at all. There's no reason for us to do that. We gotta, we gotta have more ball security than that. But the defense makes the big play Made again. Made a big play again. Badani carried the ball in here and gave it right back to us at the two. And that, that really helped. Uh, you know, we lost it and then we got it back. Here we come out and once again, Caddis is wide open in the end zone for a touchdown. And we go up 17 to nothing in the third period. Did you remind your backs to hold on to the football? Uh, Jim, I'd rather not discuss that on this show. And, <laughs> but uh, we fumbles are, are just not part of football. We're still G-rated, right? That's right. <laughs> we don't want to talk about that. Here they break out. Uh, 48 Neal here is a wonderful back, Jim. This guy can break tackles and run. He's been very impressive all year for Maryland. Um, Yo ball goes back to pass again, hits over the middle. Now they're down to our 26-yard line. And once again, this game is not over because of what Maryland can do offensively. They are a big uh, offensive team that can score a lot of points real fast. Um, Blunt, their uh, second tailback, uh, gets a good game, goes down inside the 10. Here is a naked bootleg by them. Yo ball gets hit uh, for a loss, and that was a big play for us uh, down in. And again, the defense... That's where the defense has done a great job. They've come up with big plays down there. Here's a third and goal. They go back to pass. Throws a ball that's tipped. And Doug Mowry makes a sensational uh, fingertip catch in the end zone. And that kills that drive. And that ball was batted around. It was not a spiral. It was spinning. So right. that was a great right. little play by Doug Mowry. Here we are in the fourth quarter. We get the ball back now and screen out here to Jamie Morris. Picks up a first down across the 35-yard line. We're still in our own territory. Um, this time, Jim gives the ball to Jamie, who breaks up the middle for a good game. We're almost out to midfield. One of the things I think was impressive is that you're blocking this big defensive front. You had to feel good about that. Well, we did a good job blocking. I thought we'd block it a little better than we did, but we did a good job. Jim goes back to pass and hits Jokic coming across the middle here. This is really a big play. It goes inside the 30-yard line. And now we're really in good shape, leading by 17 points and, and driving. And again, the game, you're mixing it up about as well as I think I've seen a Michigan team between the pass and the run. Here's a great play by Jim. Scrambles and hits Caddis uh, uh, over on the right sideline. Uh, he was not the primary receiver, but when Jim uh, scrambled out of there, he got in position to catch the ball. We get stopped down here again, Jim, which was really isn't very good, but settled for a field goal. And now we're up 20 to nothing in the fourth period. And, that's the way your game's going to end. But with the way the defense plays, uh, you can... Here's a very interesting play, not to interrupt, Jim. Uh, here we get a great uh, sack uh, by Hammerstein. Mike Reinhold intercepts the ball. 
darn if he doesn't trip over Hammerstein, <laughs> or he might have run for a touchdown. But uh, that was a great play by uh, Hammerstein. Of course, Reinhold is uh, pleased to have his first interception. Well, it was a 20 to nothing victory, Michigan over Maryland. Big, big win for you. 3-0 and after the non-conference schedule. Maybe the only thing bad about it was that you had two offensive guards hurt. Yeah, Jim, and we, at this particular time, we don't know exactly what um, their status is going to be. Um, Mike Kusar, fine sophomore guard, uh, had a serious uh, arm injury. Fortunately, x-ray showed it wasn't broken. And uh, that's good because we may get him back soon. But uh, Mark Hammerstein has a knee uh, injury. Uh, I don't think we'll have him back uh, real quickly. I uh, just hope that it's not serious enough to keep him out for the season because he's been playing great football for us and we need him back in that offensive line. Michigan's been playing great football all season long, but coming up is now the Big Ten schedule, and that's when things get a little different. Stay with us. We've got a preview of all the big guys in the Big Ten, so don't go away. It used to be said that the Big Ten was a three-yard and cloud of dust offensive conference. Well, what used to be just ain't anymore. And 1985 is a classic example. In other words, Michigan will see more passing attacks in the conference schedule than they've ever seen before. And they'll see better quarterbacks from top to bottom than ever before. Starting with Iowa's Chuck Long. He passed up a chance to go pro, to pass more for the Hawkeyes, and Hayden Fry couldn't have been happier. At Illinois, Jack Trudeau returns to lead the Fighting Illini's aerial circus. He completed 65% of his passes last year and is expected to be better this year. Purdue has had a history of great throwers, and this year is no different. Jim Everett fits right in with the names of Greasy, Dawson, Phipps, Danielson, and Herman. And there's more. Indiana's Steve Bradley may not get the notoriety, but he threw for better than 2,500 yards last year. And maybe the most dangerous double threat in the conference is a sophomore out of Minnesota, Ricky Foggy. And not only can he hurt you through the air, but if he gets loose in the open field on the Lou Holtz option attack, he's as dangerous as a top-flight running back. And speaking of running backs, the Big Ten has their share of great ones once again, starting in Ohio State with the outstanding Keith Byers. Not far behind Byers is Thomas Rooks at Illinois, another big back with speed. Ronnie Harmon of Iowa is a double threat as a runner and receiver, and with Long, one of the main reasons Iowa is picked so highly in the national ranking. Not far behind those big names is Ray Wallace of Purdue. If Everett doesn't throw, Wallace can get it done on the ground, and at Michigan State, sophomore tailback Lorenzo White will turn a few heads. Complimenting those people is a group of Big Ten receivers that anyone on the West Coast would love to have, starting with David Williams of Illinois. Bill Happel gives Chuck Long an outstanding target at Iowa if he can't find Harmon. And if you want to go deep, nobody does it much better than Michigan State's Mark Ingram, who averaged better than 22 yards a catch last season. And if that's not enough, Purdue's Steve Griffin caught passes for better than 1,000 yards last year, and he's back for more. At Ohio State, one of the powers that used to rule on the ground, a tandem of Mike Lanise and Chris Carter, give them a terrific one-two punch through the air that the Buckeyes will try and exploit. So it's clear the Big Ten has joined the Air Corps. But over the years, one thing has not changed in the Big Ten Conference, and that is, without a solid defense, you don't go to Pasadena on New Year's Day. And maybe the toughest of the bunch is Iowa's All-American linebacker Larry Station. The Hawkeye defense is hurt through graduation, but with Station in the middle, they'll still be very tough. Peter Najarian hasn't had much to crow about as a golden gopher during his career, but he's back again for Minnesota, and opponents always remember him. And at Ohio State, the defense is still a rallying cry, and with Pepper Johnson teamed alongside Chris Spielman, the Buckeyes will have plenty to rally around. Up front on defense, the Big Ten continues to produce, and Purdue's Brad Horner produces a lot of sacks. Rick Graff of Wisconsin is a solid player who will speed the rebuilding process of the Badgers. Illinois has a reputation on offense, but Guy T. Patiller makes sure opponents don't forget that the Illini can also play tough defense. And if it's a quick defensive end you're wondering about, how about Kelly Quinn of Michigan State? He had 15 tackles for losses last year and expects more this year. 
If it happens that the quarterback avoids linebackers and linemen and actually gets a pass off, the Big Ten is loaded with people ready to pick them off, like Purdue's Rod Woodson, who intercepted three aerials last year and returned them for better than a 20-yard average. Phil Parker at Michigan State is another one you don't want to throw it around or he may wind up with it instead of the intended receiver. Iowa has Devon Mitchell. He led the entire conference with five thefts, and he returned those for better than 100 yards. No question, it's an outstanding conference from top to bottom on both sides of the ball. And keep in mind one thing. We didn't even mention the outstanding talent that Michigan will have to offer this year. What used to be the Big Two and Little Eight really is the Big Ten in 1985. As you take a look at that, I wondered if you felt the same way. What happened to the big two and little eight? Everybody's out there <laughs> got players. Well, I think it's uh, true around the country uh, that everybody's got some good players and there are a lot of good teams. But, Jim, this year, I don't think there's any question. The toughest conference in the nation today is the Big Ten. You can look at their non-conference schedule. Better than 80% of the non-conference games played by Big Ten teams have been won by Big Ten teams. Indiana, the big surprise, at 3-0. Right. Well, you take uh, Indiana, Minnesota, Michigan State, uh, Wisconsin, Northwestern's won a couple of games. Uh, Purdue now is definitely in the race uh, with the way Jim Everett's throwing. And, of course, Iowa and Ohio State are probably no. still the favorites. You forgot to mention Michigan. Where do you guys oh, fit in, in there? <laughs> we're in there, but uh, we're talking about the people we play, not talking <laughs> about ourselves. Okay. But it is, um, it is a tremendously well-balanced conference. The next ex eight weeks, you can count on upsets in the Big Ten because they're going to happen. There are too many good teams, and when they play one another, if there are a few mistakes here and there, look out. Well, we've got the Big Ten opener for the Michigan Wolverines coming up next week. It's not easy. It's Wisconsin. We'll be back with the scouting report in just a minute.